I took $23,000 worth of filmmaking gear and put it head to head with a $23 children's camera. All to answer the age old question, does gear actually matter? To find out, I challenged myself to create two films using one script and have quite the close shave along the way. It's all the gear versus an idea. As an artistic outlet that uses technology, you can't even think about making a video without someone asking the question, does the gear actually matter? Filmmakers and photographers are like cats and laser pointers. There is no escaping the alluring shiny object. The question of does gear matter has in fact been a massive driver of clickbait videos by all the YouTube filmmakers for years. Gear doesn't matter. Gear matters, but it doesn't matter. Well, today we're talking about why gear doesn't matter. Gas, or gear acquisition syndrome, hits filmmakers and photographers just as hard as Stanley Cups and their collectors. But it drives constant fascination every time a new camera or fancy toy is released, or new colorway. There is no judgment here. Now, I could just say, well, the gear is just a tool and the result is all based around the person using it, but I had a bee in my bonnet. And the buzzing got louder and louder. Perhaps you have a bee in your bonnet. Bee! Ah! <laughs> I recently heard someone described as having all the gear and no idea. Firstly, great drive-by. Got them, good one. Now this person I won't dox for obvious reasons, but I want to paint the picture for you. So in comes my best friend, Generative AI. This person was very early in their filmmaking journey and obviously had a massive cash injection from somewhere. They had bought all the new fancy high-end equipment and called themselves a cinematographer with next to no real-world practical experience. All the gear, no idea. If this can be true, so can its opposite. What does all idea and no gear look like? Hmm. Well, that buzzing you can hear? That's a creative challenge. Coming up in three, two. Sorry, I couldn't wait. I really want to test this. I've developed a classic head to head challenge. All the gear and no idea versus all idea and no gear. Essentially, I've written one script and it will be the starting point and exactly the same for both films. The same ingredients, but different recipe. And kitchen. And appliances. In fact, maybe think of it like Iron Chef. The ultimate culinary showdown which revolves around a unique ingredient, but for today's purpose, the unique ingredient is... Restrictions! As the great philosopher and mad titan Thanos once said, Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. It's unscientific, but as evenly matched as I could make it. Let's get cracking. For the gear approach, I want to have the simplest and most unoriginal idea as possible. Essentially a sit down interview, best looking frame we can set up with all the gear we have, but that's essentially it. It's gonna look super, super flashy, all the bells and whistles. Got it? Yep. Everything but the kitchen sink. I love it. Side note, we're just using gear we've got here at Balloon Tree. We could have hired a cinema camera or some extra lights and gear, but YouTube isn't really bringing in all of the dollary dues yet. So if you want to help change that, throw a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and that'll help a lot. All right, let's get to it. For the idea approach, I'll be shooting everything on this $22 pink children's camera I bought from Amazon. It is genuinely awful, but I'll leave a link for it in the description below if you're interested in your own awful. Now this obviously puts me at a big gear disadvantage, so I need to make the idea as creative and interesting as possible to work from the same script. So there'll be no fancy lights, no fancy cameras, no microphones, no stands, no hair. Wait, Chase, did you change that? <laughs> Okay, so now there's really nothing flashy about this approach. No bells and whistles, no quiff and curls, just me, solemn, at peace, resolute. Should we uh, make a bit of a shot list and go shoot this thing? Yup. Yup. <laughs> I cannot see what's on the back of this screen either.
that's a wrap. Let's let's look at this. Haha, <laughs> oh <God. laughs> <laughs> we're still here, we're still rolling. Haha. <laughs> I've prepared two delectable morsels of content for you to sample here today. Equal in script, not equal in approach. All I ask is that you sample both and we shall compare tasting notes post meal. Bon appetit. When you're a child, your imagination is everything. Adventure is around every corner. Curiosity and discoveries are rewarded. You can be anyone, go anywhere, do anything. Nothing is off limits. So why is it that as we grow up, our imagination gets put away, rarely to be seen again? Is it a fear of vulnerability? A fear of judgment? Getting it wrong? I wonder what would happen if we let a little bit of it back in. Who knows where it could lead? When you're a child, your imagination is everything. Adventure is around every corner. Curiosity and discoveries are rewarded. You can be anyone, go anywhere, do anything. Nothing is off limits. Why is it that as we grow up, our imagination gets put away, rarely to be seen again? Is it a fear of vulnerability? A fear of judgment? Of getting it wrong? I wonder what would happen if we let a little bit of it back in. Who knows where it could lead? This is not a perfect experiment. There are so many variables and the results will always be subjective, but there's four things that I took from this process that I want to discuss. Number one, let's look at aesthetics. From a purely surface level approach, the gear film looks incredible and the pink camera generated a potato. It makes sense that the gear looks better and the idea from a pure visuals perspective, but that is just one way of connecting with an audience. Context also plays a big part in determining how aesthetically pleasing something should be. But even then, I think in the last couple of years, that bar for visual quality is getting lower and lower. Heck, I even shoot these videos on a $600 camera with a broken lens, and I run a video production company. Which brings me to storytelling. With less importance placed on the production fidelity, how you craft a story and bring an audience on the journey is much more powerful. So the gear film looks great, but from a storytelling point of view, it's pretty bland. I gave my delivery of the script as much emotional resonance as I could in an interview format, but there's a ceiling for how high the storytelling can go. But in the idea film, we get that script as a voiceover, doing the exact same thing in the gear film, but now we can include some other story devices to really elevate the storytelling. So the overlay visuals that were chosen to accompany certain lines at extra meeting. The texture of the footage, albeit with pixels the size of the MCG, adds some nostalgia and a perspective of a certain time period. The music makes the audience feel a certain way. Sound effects transport the audience to feel like they're there. Because the idea is bigger, we're able to incorporate all of these thoughtful additions and just sit in the moment. Take a pause and have it feel full and impactful in a way that gear can't in isolation. So where does the idea come from? It's creativity, which is why I wanted to work on both films from the same starting script. Both approaches began the same way, but the script was either just captured or it was explored, challenged and crafted. There's nothing I love more than taking apart a script or concept and turning it on its head, abstractly reorganizing its parts that piece it together or taking the core idea behind something and illustrating something unique with that. Whenever I talk about this as an approach, I'm often asked, well, how are you so creative? Honestly, it's just a way of thinking. It's a process. And I've actually turned it into a short worksheet that you can download and use yourself. I've left a link in the description. It's called the how to make your idea not cheat sheet. And it's been designed with the whole team here at Balloon Tree Productions. We use this exact approach in many of the projects we've produced for our clients, as well as in this very video to build out the approach for the idea film. At the very least, Thinking about a project in an abstract way will get you different options to explore. And exploring different options means finding different solutions or more clarity around what you're actually looking to solve, share and communicate. So I believe it's a very worthwhile experience. Download it from the link below. Let me know what you think. 
Finally, my last takeaway from making these two films is how I felt while making them and while watching them. I'm a big gut instinct guy and my gut loved playing in a more creative space. And you're cool. My gut loves you cool. There was a moment when Chase and I were working through the idea at the table and the enthusiasm and excitement from one moment of discovery changed the entire direction of the video. It's changed the direction I want to take this video. That was genuine. It's a thrilling feeling when an idea matches the brief and it all works better together. Like, be honest. How did you feel watching each film? Let me know in the comments because I would almost guarantee the idea film made you feel more than the gear film. People lean on gear and the Hollywood look because it appears more impressive on set and on screen. Which is why I love shooting this project on the, wait, what was it called? Oh yeah, it's the mini portable cute camera color screen children's digital camera HD 1080p camera with photo video function, one button operation, easy and convenient cost effective fun end. I loved it because I prioritize the ideation process that makes the idea powerful in the first place. So thank you, Amazon. Five stars. Just want you to know, people on YouTube, look at how sketch this is. This camera was on here. It made me very uncomfortable. Fly close to the sun. Let's go.